in the hills of Provence, one man's dream looks set to become automotive reality. Guy Negre is a restless jack-in-the-box of an engineer. He used to work in Formula One. Now these are his passion. Cars that run on air, with remarkable qualities if they live up to their hype. Take filling up. Just three minutes with an air compressor. That's much quicker than a battery car, for instance. And in a carbon-conscious age, the urban emissions of this car are just air itself. The air is stored in lightweight carbon fiber tanks in the chassis. The engine sits in the chassis too, at the back. The air comes from the tanks to power the pistons which drive the car. On long journeys, a petrol burner heats the air, which expands it, increases the pressure, and boosts the performance. The first buyers will be people who care about the environment, he says. It also has to be economical. After a long wait, development of the air cars now being backed by the industrial giant Tata. Guy Negre says there's no issue with safety. If the car crashes, the air tanks won't shatter just split with a very loud bang. He hopes to have the first one for sale in France within a year, for just over two and a half thousand pounds. I'd like to think he would succeed because, you know, we, we should be supporting this kind of technology. It, it is a move in the right direction towards uh, potentially sustainable personal transport. But? There are buts. Um, there are still engineering issues to be overcome. And it's how effectively those issues can be overcome to produce a package that's going to be acceptable to the public. Top speed of next year's model will be more than 80 miles an hour, according to Guy Negre, though the prototype I drove didn't give that impression. So how does it drive? Well, at the moment, it sounds like a motorboat and it feels like a bread van. The designers say it'll be greatly improved by the end of the year. Certainly, if they keep their promises on price and fuel efficiency, it will sell. You could just be looking at the beginning of the end of the traditional petrol engine. Roger Harabin. BBC News.